Hello, hello, my hey, I got something to say, people. Woo! I love you guys. Thank you for all your support. I feel like it's been my birthday month. It started November 23rd and it just keeps on going and going and I'm loving it all. 65 is going to be off the charts. So, so much to celebrate. But before I bring on my next guest, who I freaking love, Lauren Weinberg is in the house. I just want to make sure you're taking advantage of the Listen to Her conference. I've been talking to you about it. It's taking place in sunny California on March 1st and March 2nd. And man, oh man, I was listening to all the different promotions about Listen to Her, and it doesn't even do it justice. So way back, I don't know when, when I met Irena Ferguson, who was my curator way back, it's probably not even a year, I fell in love with Irena Ferguson, who curated my TEDx. And we just became buzz and she told me about what she wanted to do. And I'm like, count me in. So I am speaking at the listener to her conference in March, 2025. And I'm looking at the lineup of people. Holy freaking moly. There are so many amazing, powerful women. You're going to want to be there. And here's the deal. I've been handing out different codes for different groups, which you can use. But now if you just use the code friend, capital F, lowercase r-i-e-n-d until december 15th you will get 50 percent off what just use friend if you have any issues you reach out to me i will put all the details in the show okay i won't but my guy thomas will stay tuned i'm gonna bring laura out in just a bit love you guys okay I know I love everybody you say, but I really love my next guest. Lauren is in the house. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Sandy. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being on. And let me, I said, listen, listen. Hey, I got something to say. Lauren was not scheduled to be on. Somebody else was scheduled. And at the last minute, their Wi-Fi went. And I said to Lauren last night, come on, you have this awesome program coming on. You have to do it. She was like, okay, I didn't even get any more than that out. She's like, yes. When, where (laughs) say yes. Right. Laura, just say yes. Say hell yes. I am a big believer in say hell yes. When opportunity knocks. (laughs) So it's going to all work out. Let me tell you a little bit about, by the way, I forgot your middle name was, it's not your middle name. It's your maiden name. Is that it? Yellen? Lauren Yellen Weinberg. Thank you for that name. It's so easy to say. <laughs> and not to mention that I went from Yellen to Weinberg. I like to say I went from Yelling to whining. And I'm not oh, sure I was a step up. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Okay. Lauren is a board certified health and wellness coach and a certified happiness coach. Why did I bring her on? With a background as a psychologist and family therapist. She has the creds. Lauren inspires her audiences and clients to embrace their personal power and learn the minds and habits that lift themselves and others. She provides, so important, concrete tools that facilitate relationships, empowered relationships, leadership, well-being, happiness, and success. Lauren is also a contributor to the book, Healthy Thinking, Happy life. I thought it was going to be something white, but okay. <laughs> happy thinking, healthy. No, happy thinking, healthy thinking, happy. All right, never mind. Healthy <laughs> thinking, happy life. A quote I didn't title it. <laughs> right? And an expert for living healthy. Wait, and an expert for living healthy list? There's so much I didn't know about you. Okay. <laughs> so before I get into it, and I know I try to keep it to 30 minutes. Lauren and I met first at a NABO event because she presented and she went up there and did a great piece. And it was about meditation, I think. Yeah, I did a meditation. And then I met her because we were in the same speaker group. And I don't want to say what she calls me, but I should I? Go ahead. <laughs> I'm your $10,000 friend. Oh. <laughs> That's a long story. We'll keep that over. (laughs) I've I've upped my price a little bit, but. She's my million dollar friend, really. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> my God. Let's get into the one line that you want to tell women and men that support us around the world. Yeah. And that's, if you want amazing things in life, you have to expect amazing things to happen. All right, Miss Lauren, of all the lines you could have picked, why'd you pick that one? Ah, uh, you know, it's so funny, Sandy. I really feel like it's taken me five years. I've been circling around this topic and it's only more recently that I realized this is it. This is the gold. This is all the marbles comes from our expectations because we settle in life for what we believe we deserve. Mm. And we don't have, that's, that's what our expectations are derived from, the sense of deserving that we have. And it's not blanket. I mean, people might feel deserving of great success in their life, but they might not feel deserving of great health or great relationships or having a sense of purpose. We limit our sense of happiness based on what we believe we deserve, as happy as we believe we deserve, right? It's like we go as far as our sense of deserving and worthiness takes us. And we can't expect more than that. We don't allow ourselves to expect more. And I realized that if you expect good enough, what you're going to get is good enough. And that mm -hmm. if you want amazing, and amazing doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to be the top speaker in the world. You don't have to be a tech mogul or, or a rock musician. It doesn't It can be, if that's what your amazing is. You can have these big audacious goals, but amazing is also how you live your life every day. Mm -hmm. So that's how I, that's why I picked that statement. Yeah. And it's so true. It's so true. And I love the way you said it. So I want to really absorb that to make sure I'm taking it in. So when you said that, like you only go as far as you think you're worthy. It's so true. And I thought about when I started being really successful with my health clubs and I was making all this money, I didn't do it consciously, but I would be like, Whoa. like I would feel guilty. Like there's people that don't have money. How do I get this money? There's people that don't have money. And you could see, if you look back, you could see the trends. And then I'd have to go, wait a minute, wait a minute. And then reset myself, go in, do a lot of coaching. <laughs> you moved your box. So the, this is how I think of it. And this is so helpful for my clients. And anybody I mentioned this to seems to really, really understand this concept. I truly believe that we are all born like perfect. Right. We are all, and I don't mean how you look or even, you know, gosh, mm -hmm. babies are sometimes born with, you know, missing limbs or problems, or, I mean, we're not all physically perfect and we have differing abilities and things like that, but we are all born just love, right? We are all born loving other people and wanting to be loved. And we just have, think that's, right? Our expectation mm -hmm. for the world is that there is not a baby. <laughs> this occurred to me the other day. There is not a baby in the world that like is drinking their milk, right? Whether it's nursing or from a bottle and thinking, yeah. oh my God, all this amazing, this is too much milk. I don't deserve this milk, right? <laughs> we never start yeah. off thinking that you're not deserving of the riches that yeah. are coming at yeah. you. But we're also born with this box, this metaphorical box that we can't put down. And starting from moment one, stuff gets filtered through this box. And because our brains are designed to keep us safe, what sticks in the box is all the stuff that's meant to keep you safe. The problem is the stuff that's meant to keep you safe is the same stuff that keeps you playing small. Mm -hmm. So it's all the things like yeah. don't stand out, you know, or money is the root of all evil or whatever those things are that you mm -hmm. carry, right? Why should I have so much? Other people don't have enough or, you know, you're not good. Just all the stuff that leads up, leaves us feeling like we're not good enough. That's the stuff that sticks in the box and all the good stuff, all the compliments, all the successes, all the times that you were shining. Mm it gets filtered through and that stuff leaves because our brains were designed that way from an evolutionary perspective. The negative stuff sticks like Velcro and the good stuff just like slides off like Teflon. 
And what happens is this box becomes our sense of what we're deserving of. And the edge of that box becomes fear, right? Because that's when you know you've hit the edge of your box, when you feel that fear, that fear. And I'm going to say something I've never said anywhere else. Do you want the breaking scoop? You want the breaking scoop? <laughs> da, da, da. Here we go. Wait, here it comes. But I'm putting it now. I'm putting my copyright on it right here in your show. Okay. Dragonfly came fear. across. You ready? Here we I'm go. Ready. Fear. You've heard like fear is, is false expectations appearing real. I know that's taken off in cognitive therapy. That's like a whole big thing. This is my, how I see it. Fear is finite expectations affecting your results. Finite expectations. I like it, baby. Trademark that. Results. Right? It's being trademarked right here. I'm copywriting it. This is mine, people. Yeah, I got it. But the truth, that's the truth, is that you have these expectations based on your box. You've hit the edge of your box. So what you learned when you started hitting that success is you learned to move your box. And we could all learn to move the box. And mm. frankly, we can learn to empty the box of the negative and replace it with positive. It just takes intention. I like the box. I'm a very visual person. So I'm following <laughs> a box here and I got stuff in it and whatever. So let's take the first question that I got from my peeps because I got mm. lots of great questions, even mm. at the last minute. And we're not going to get to them all. You know the deal. You can always reach out to Lauren. She'd be happy to hear from you. But Please. we'll call her. I make up names for them. I like Betty Boo. This, this, we'll call this one <laughs> Betty Boo. Dear Lauren, I understand that my life is limited because of the stories I tell myself. I get it. I've been coached for years. Here I sit at 48 years old going, why, oh, why? <laughs> I know all this, but I'm still here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Teddy Boot, for your honesty. But one thing that I still don't know how to do. So I get there are, this is, okay. I get there are all this, all these negative stories in my head. But the truth is, I'm just not aware they're there. So how do <laughs> How do you well, change it if you don't, if you can't see it, how can you says, change it? Yeah, she says, how do I even find them? I get that I'm limited because of my stories, but I don't even know they're there. So now what? Peace out. I like her. <laughs> Peace out. Peace, Betty Boop. So that's a great, great question. You know, some of your, you know, viewers, some people listening might know the statistic that we have science, I don't know how people have figured this out, but they use this statistic all the time, that we have about 50,000 thoughts a day and about 80% of those thoughts are negative. There's a lot in our box. There is a lot in the box, people. You gotta empty the box. So you're never gonna catch all the negative thoughts. Can I fit it all in here? <laughs> This is a bigger box, but you know, let's take the negative stuff and get it into that size. Yeah, box. I'd like and that. Leave the big box, box for the positive stuff. Okay. So here's the thing. You only have to find some of them. You don't have to know all of your limiting beliefs. And let me tell you, I really diverge with a lot of people here who focus on making friends with your inner critic, thanking your inner critic inviting your inner critic to dinner, you know, talking about all your inner stuff. I don't think it's necessary. I think that there's a much simpler way to do this. And it's because this is what I did in my life before I knew what I was doing. <laughs> I, I was in a place in my life where I was sort of shrinking. I was home. I wasn't working yet. I didn't come back to work as a coach. I was a psychologist, didn't come back to work yet as a coach. I was home. And I really was not living my purpose. And over that time, I just started feeling smaller and smaller. And the truth is the way that you feel about yourself inside shows on the outside. And in my case, it was showing in the way that I spoke about myself. And I would constantly make myself the butt of jokes or I would put myself down. And luckily I had a friend who said to me, Lauren, stop talking about yourself that way. 
And the angels must have been on my shoulders because I heard her. And what I started doing is so simple. I call it now catch and release. Actually, I was doing two things. Catch and release, I love to share with people because it's so easy. You just catch yourself when you're putting yourself down and you know it. It doesn't, again, have to be these long dialogues of all your limiting beliefs. You catch yourself because you find yourself saying things like, damn, where did I put those keys? You're such an idiot. How did you lose those keys again? Right? The stuff that really sticks out and something happens every day. Like, oh my God, I forgot the milk at the store. I can't believe I did that. You're such a loser, right? Like you say right. these things yeah. to yourself, you don't even realize it. But once you set the intention to look for it, you start seeing them. You catch that thought, you neutralize it, by saying something like, you know what? You lost the keys because you're doing 13 things for other people. And that's really great, but it leaves you a little distracted. You neutralize it, right? Or, yeah. oh, you didn't have a list. And so, of course, you remembered other things, but you forgot this one thing. It's okay. You'll make a list and get it next time. And then you let it go. You catch it. You neutralize it. You let it go. It doesn't have to be more complicated than that. I was doing that. I also realized I was doing something else at the same time. I was catching the good stuff and I was holding on to it. And let me tell you how bottom of the barrel I was. I was finding myself saying things like, wow, Lauren, I'd be driving and making a left turn and saying, oh, wow, Lauren, that was a textbook left turn. <laughs> you did such a good job. I mean, I was really looking for things to like about myself. Oh, um, my. But, you know, once you start getting in that habit of releasing the bad, it makes room for the good. And then there's so many more things to compliment yourself on. And what I would recommend to people, along with catching and releasing, start a list of the good. And every day, add at least one thing, one new thing every day. And if you can't think of one new thing, say the same thing every day until you can think of a new thing. But just set your intention to catch and release the negative and catch and hold on to the positive. And honestly, if you did nothing else, this will start to shift your life in ways that you can't even imagine because it did for me. It created so much room. I was, oh, created all the room I needed to start exercising and eating better and to go back to work. Like it started a cascade of everything because I moved my box and yes. moved my box. So I just want to, this is big and I just want to make sure I got it down because like I said, I'm very visual. So I'm already moving my box on my desk. It's just a visual. <laughs> Literally moving the box. <laughs> moving the box. I need a box. <laughs> I am a big component on what words you say to yourself matter. Even if like I'm a butt, like it matters, you it know, matters. I'm a jerk. I'm a, it, like for little things, it matters. So. And I'm also a big component of don't make a big hairy deal out of things. So I love this. I love that. I don't know the whole thing about inviting your inner critic to dinner. I didn't even hear, hear that. So we're good. <laughs> so let's put that aside. But just being aware of what you're saying to yourself and then catch it and release it and then just changing the dialogue a little, even to start noticing the little things that you do that are amazing. And then taking a step further, which I like writing it down and just, yeah. Say, oh yeah. That, is that, is that read it. Yeah. How amazing, right? When you have this list and you can go back and read these wonderful things about yourself. And I would also encourage people, ask other people, what do you like about me? Or go back and look at your emails of things from work when people paid you a compliment. Pull mm. those out. Add it to your list. Like, look for the data. Look for all the stuff that, like, lets you know that you are shining, whether you're giving yourself credit for it or not. So, even, I was thinking of this the other day. Even some of the most positive people I know, Right? They'll go to an event, they'll go to a party, they'll go wherever. It's all fun. They have a great time. But somebody little said something to them. And, and we're talking about positive people. We're not even talking about doom and gloom. 
but they go and they meet all the people. Oh, you look great. Right. And I was sitting next to someone and because I was watching this, I go, I don't think that's really happening. And then I'm at an event. All these people were saying great things. And this one little person said, I, I, it was like the smallest thing. We got in the car and that's all she focused on. Isn't that amazing? And this is a positive person. Because we're human. Because we're human. So what do you do with that? Let's address that because I got a lot of questions about that. Like, I know I shouldn't, but I could have these 10,000 things and one person says this or 10 things that are growing. And I focus on that. How could I not do that? Because it happens even to amazing, uplifting people. Absolutely. And it, it happens to me, right? The thing, the difference is you become better at catching it by doing it, by practicing these things. You just become better at it. And the more you love yourself, the more you allow yourself to fall in love with yourself, to mm. accept yourself for who you are, laws especially. I found something out recently that emeralds, unlike all the other gemstones, which are prized for being flawless, like the more flawless you are, the better, emeralds are prized for having more flaws. And that's because it makes them unique. And we are all unique. We're like the stars in the galaxy, right? We are all unique, but we can all shine. And I realized until I accepted all of my shortcomings and saw that as part of what makes me unique and celebrating me, until I did that, I was standing in my own way. Once you can allow yourself to just be human, to love your humanness, to say, you know what, there are some times that I'm going to default to that default mechanism, right? I'm just going to give in to that human part of me that is going to latch on to the negative because that's, again, how our brains were designed. But then you become better at catching it. I have a friend who teaches meditation and she says, even the Dalai Lama's mind wanders. It's just, he's better at finding it. He finds it so quickly and is able to pull it back because he practices it. <laughs> so if you practice catch and release, and if you allow yourself to fall in love, with who you are, it's okay when you fall off the wagon because that's just, you have compassion for the human part of you because we're all on a journey. None of us is perfect. And let me tell you, we all study the things we need to work on. We all focus on the things that we need in our own life. Absolutely. Right? But I we're know together, a baby. Person, there's not a person who doesn't need to learn to let go of the limitations and expect amazing. Everybody does, at least in some area of your yeah. life. Yeah, there's always an area. There's, there's always, I call it the sticky wicked. Sticky wicked. There's always going to be something. There's always going to be an area where you need to give yourself a little more love. And I know you mentioned at the top of the hour, I'm just going to jump right in here and take it. But you mentioned at the top of the hour that I have a program coming up. So what happened when, once I started to catch and release all of my own stuff and catch and hold on to the good, it set off a whole, my whole life in a different trajectory. And over the past several years, really, I went back to become a coach, you know, about five, six yeah. years ago and everything in my life shifted. And I have taken all the things that I've used in my own life and all the things I've learned as a psychologist and a family therapist, as a happiness coach, as a health and wellness coach, I've taken it all and I've distilled it down into my coaching program, which is called Shine. And when I coach people, I coach people who really just want to have a bigger impact in their own life or to help light up the world, much like you do, to help light up the world around you. Mm. And my coaching, when I coach people, it's very individual, but I've created these books, these five workbooks. I saw them. They looked, oh my God. That's why I, I wanted you to be on the show. Cause I was like, oh my God, this so yeah. much work, so much. I can see so much of you in it. Thank you. It's, it's really like my heart work and yeah. I really try to be thoughtful. I add to them all the time. And for the first time ever, I'm making the workbooks because I know how profoundly they help shift people, regardless of what we're working on in coaching. I know that the workbooks help to move people. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Quickly. so for the first time ever, I've, I'm making the workbooks available. My hope is 
I'm not my hope. I'm turning them into a digital course. But before I do, I want to make sure that I'm really serving at the highest level. So I have made them available as a beta test. Oh. So that people can use them and give me feedback. Because I know that there are people out there who want, they not only want to grow, they want to help other people grow. Mm. So I've created this course. The only time that I'll probably be offering it where I'm live, I'm going to offer six live sessions so I can introduce each book and get Smart answer people's fun. questions. And so it's six weeks of working together where I introduce each book one at a time. You get to work with a book for a week, come back, give me feedback, tell me what I can do better, tell me what worked, what needs to be emphasized. Perfect. But I know how much they're going to help people along the way. So this program starts January 7th. I've made it available. I think it's something incredibly affordable, but still where it keeps people feeling like they have stuff yeah. in the game. And I think so. Motivated. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So it's $97. I'll just say it, you know, so that's a commitment, but it's just say a it, doable just commitment. Say it. It's a doable commitment. I mean, people just paid to take courses with me $49 for a two hour course that I did through mainline school night which is a wonderful program. It's a great right, program. Right, it's a great program. But that's, you know, paying $50 for two hours. Here, you have six weeks of me and material for 97. I did the math. It comes out to $2.30 a day. And I like to, like, I thought about it. I'm like, Marcy did the math, $2.30 Mark, cents a day. <laughs> no, I love, when I saw what you were doing, I that's why I was like, wait a minute, this is meant to be, you know, it's kismet because, I think it's ingenious how you're doing it. And yet, first of all, forget, forget all that. I only bring people on the show that I know so much. It's how they live their life and what they want to share with the world. And that's you. Like there's so many things out there, but when you say we're in it together, you know, yeah, you might be on the other side of some of it, but we're still on the journey, you know, every day. Yeah, all every people. single this is day. A human journey. Yeah. And the right? fact I love, I'm all about the workbooks because when you write it down and you do the work, oh my God, it it just has such a bigger impact. And also the impact stays. And I believe it happens faster. Oh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. And it it, it makes you committed to following through. Because when you start thinking about something, you might be thinking about it for a minute or two and you get an idea, but then you start thinking about something else, writing it down and doing it as a workbook keeps you committed. Absolutely. Lauren, we got to wrap up in a few minutes. So there's a couple things that I just want to review to make sure the people out there, wherever they are in the world, you know, they're like, okay, this is something I can take action on. So let's start with the one major thing that you want to get out to the world, and I just want to make sure if you want amazing things in life, you have to expect amazing things to happen. So the most important thing that they could take action to live life like that, what would you recommend? I would recommend really thinking about what it is that you want. Visualize it. Really see it really see it and then take those steps that help you erase the limitations that are standing in the way of you and what it is that you want. And it might be something like for you, it might be your health. It might be speaking up more at work. It might be, it could be anything, your health, your wealth, your relationships, right? You might just want more love in your life. I mean, it doesn't have to be mm -mm. outsized and crazy, it can be just being calmer and more peaceful, like whatever would make amazing happen for you, look like for you. And then, you know, everything you want is on the other side of what you're willing to do. And what's standing between you and that other side is this box of fear. So empty the box. Move I love that. I love that. Take the so course. Take the shine. It's called shine. Shine. Right. Shine, cool. light up your world. Because normally I say shine and light up the world around you. But this is shine and light up your world. Because that's where it starts. I truly believe when you shine, the energy you put out can change the world. Absolutely. So you want to expect amazing things and make amazing things happen? 
come take my course. It's everything you need. It's all the things. Love you, Lauren. I, I love you. Okay, my hey, I got something to say. People, aren't you glad that Lauren came on the show today? So here's the deal. How can they reach out to you? Because we'll put it in the show notes, but they want to hear it from you. Everything you need to find me, to find my course. And there's a great, amazing free download. I have to stop using the word amazing because it's called Expect Amazing. It's called Expect Amazing. My no, don't stop saying it. No, keep saying it. No, keep <laughs> the saying only it. word I use anymore. Everything is amazing to me. Life is amazing. If don't you go change. to lastingchangewellness.com, lastingchangewellness.com. I know that's a mouthful. But you will see at the top of the page a banner to click, and it'll take you right to the course. At the bottom of every page is how you can get this free, free Expect Amazing Mindset Workbook. And that'll give you a good idea of what my workbooks are like. And if that's all you get, you're going to get incredible value just from that piece of material. Absolutely. And you can find out how to reach me as well. Absolutely. I was going to say, I was going to say amazing, but I stopped myself. Well, you're right. Let's not. Don't stop ourselves. Amazing. Be amazing. Expect amazing. amazing. Expect amazing. 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 And make amazing happen. Lauren, amazing. Lauren, amazing. <laughs> okay. Hey, I got something to say, people. I really appreciate you. I love you. You guys have supported me through thick and thin. I'm telling you, you're the best peeps in the world. Lauren, and I would really appreciate you sharing this with someone that you know would benefit from listening to this episode. <sighs> thank you, Lauren. Oh, I know what I'm going to say. Until next time. <laughs> Toodles. Toodles. <laughs>